Rufa Useni, now God will they even go bless you for this particular thing where you tell Nigerians. For this particular thing where you tell Nigerians for inside this video, now God will they even go bless you. I beg, if you know any social media handles of Rufa Useni, tag him for this video. Make a drop your account number for the comment section. I want credit and some money because of this particular thing. Wait, 10 Nigerians for inside this video. Rufa Husseini of Arise News. Don't finally react to waiting they go for inside this country. If you come across this video, please help me to spread this video. Help me to share this so that other Nigerians will still hear what I'm hearing in this video. And I'll be right back. Since 1960, we have leaders that have constantly wasted. How do our resources get wasted? They get wasted in corruption. In 1960, we earned a lot of goodwill after gaining independence. Everything we earned, we lost. Many nations were willing to give us loans because they saw us as a new beautiful bride of the world. They believed that if Nigeria prospers, Africa can prosper. And a lot of people still believe in that capacity. Recently, I was in Kenya talking to other African leaders, talking to their members of parliament. And the conversation is still, why is Nigeria lacking behind? We look forward to Nigeria. But as a nation, what did we do? We took the possibilities and we wasted it. We squandered it. Remember what the Bible says? A little sleep, a little slumber. A little folding of the house of sleep. So shall your poverty come. We saw so much resource, then we started wasting it with the political class and corruption. We made corruption the order of the day. We wasted so much. After we discovered oil in Oloibri in 56, we kept on wasting the little resource we had. And we continued to waste. In the 70s, when the Yom Kippur War happened in 73, the crude prices went from $3 per barrel to about over $10 per barrel. What happened? We continued to waste. In fact, our leader there, Yakubu Gowa, said the problem is not money, but how to spend it. And indeed, most leaders said, let's eat the money. Let's waste it. Because if you chop my own, I chop your own, then it can be a whole lot better. Then we started the game of deceit and decided the game of waste. So we kept on wasting the little resource God gave us. In fact, as of 1977, we wasted so much that we had imported the most amount of cement in the world to any ports. And this is called the cement armada. The fallout of that is that we settled cases way up to the 80s. Do you know as Nigeria as a nation was suffering, some other people were getting rich at the expense of Nigeria. Some Nigerian importers got rich from the cement and murder because they were the ones that connived also to take Nigeria to court because Nigeria had defaulted. So they saw the waste and they continued the waste. The same people that helped waste the resources of Nigeria and the way and the way they have destroyed the country are the ones that came the next time in the 80s and said, oh, the country is not good. And they continued with that. In the 80s, again, the waste had become so much. At first, we blamed Ghana for our problem. We said Ghana must go. But the truth is, it wasn't about the Ghanaians. Our problem had become so much. Chagari was toppled. Buhari came in. Then we had very strict measures. Then the waste continued after Buhari was toppled. And the waste continued up to the early 80s. The late 80s, beg your pardon, when we floated our currency. And it never remained the same. So, the kingdom of Nigeria has totally suffered waste. Waste in every dimension. Look at the proportion of the money we earned from crude oil compared to the development we have. You will say that it's been waste. In fact, despite the development that was done in the 70s in this country, how most parts of Lagos were built, how Todd Miller was conceptualized and all these things, it is not proportionate to the kind of money we have earned. Most of the money has gone to private hands because of the waste. And the truth has to be said. The waste is what kills us. If we do not stop the waste, the waste will constantly kill us. Because as we return to democracy, we have constantly wasted. The first way to stop the waste is accountability. And that's why I have been asking for over a week. The president cannot tell me they bought a private jet without telling us the price of it so that we will know accountability is key you cannot buy a private jet in the name of the people with the resource of the state and tell me 
that the money should not be told to the people. The only time you can say that is if you probably bought the private jet with your money. That's the first level of accountability. The second way to cut the waste is to check the budgets. National waste. Truth has to be said. Listen, go and check budgets. They did a research work recently and they discovered that the line item in Nigeria's budget for Ministry of uh, uh, Department of Aerospace, Department of Aerospace, they were doing pro a pre pregnancy awareness campaign for 80 million naira. What has Department of Aerospace got to do with pregnancy awareness? Another way that we waste is not that the money is not enough to be able to fix projects. One of the biggest corruption scam in this world is budget padding. What they write in the budgets. You see, the over 20 or 30 trillion they itemize every year, every government will really issue out contracts on a yearly basis. Those contracts are to make the lives of the people better. There's something called cost benefit analysis of every contract. What is the cost doing to the development of the people? That's the biggest question. So if every government issues out a contract, then what is the development, what is the benefit of that contract to the development of the people? But in most cases, you will see that most of the contracts that are now done are not in benefit to the people. How can an aerospace agency be doing a contract on pregnancy? Somebody will have thought that an aerospace agency will think about contracts around aerospace research, around competitions for secondary schools to bolster aerospace research, about software hackathons to build software for aerospace development in the country. But when you see that level of wastage through the budget, then you know what's going on. And you know how they do this easily? Because they know that Nigerians will not have the scrutiny to be able to review the budget line by line except some people like budgets govspend.ng are the ones now taking the effort to review the budget line by line and that's when they are seeing all of this wastage coming out so the truth has to be said the next thing we can do to show this was is to be part of the budget process everybody should be part of the budget process because the wastage of few people will affect the collective wastage of us of us as a people and as a nation and if we do not rise up, time will pass us by. Just imagine, every manipulated contract in the budget could have been used to do something for the betterment of the people. So when you look at it, then you need to be able to tackle wastage. Another way to tackle wastage is the electoral process. If you do not vote in the right people you can hold accountable, then you don't have a reason to complain that the electoral process has gone bad. A lot of people will argue, if I, our votes don't count, but come out and vote. Come out and vote. Hey, they manipulate the process. Another way to be able to tackle wastage in our country is to be able to build stronger institutions. We must come out and collectively stand for our institutions. Because if our institutions do not work, then our lives will not work. Just imagine, if our institutions of state, like the police, like INEC, another institution of state, is corrupted, then definitely you can't have a country that can be built on integrity because it's going to be a quagmire. So wastage pervades the air because institutions do not work. And when institutions do not work, when life becomes unbearable and people are overtaxed, then we don't see what their taxpayers' money is being used for, then life will become unbearable. Today now, they are collecting electronic money transfer uh, taxes from almost every transaction you have. Any money gets in your account, government collects a certain amount. Well, I'm good. The question is, the money, what is it being used to do in the budget? They will say projects. Projects like what? Is it aerospace ministry that is now doing projects like pregnancy awareness? So those are the questions we should ask ourselves. In your own personal life, how do you tackle wastage? The very first way to tackle wastage is you need to watch your spending. You need to watch your spending. How do you spend? How do you spend money? How do you manage resource? What do you do with the money you have? 
like before I was talking about Ashwebi, Ashwebi, a lot of you, if you calculate what you are spending on Ashwebi in a year, you will see that that money will buy you land and be able to start up a, a, a little project that will help humanity. Secondly, all your earnings must not be spent on what you will have today. You will deny yourself to be able to advance to the future. For you, it might be Louis Vuitton bags. It might be Louis Vuitton shoes. You must always splurge. Anyway, most people cannot splurge any longer because dollar to pounds now, nah, or pounds to naira is no joke any longer. But for you, you want to always splurge. You always want to have the matching bag and matching shoes. You forget that life will pass you by. Life is not about matching bag and matching shoes. You will not be remembered for the number of Louis Vuitton bags you have. You will be remembered for the impact you made in the lives of humanity. I tell people, rather than give that priority, why don't you give people priority? Enhance a life, lift up a life. Somebody say, hey, Rufai, I lift up lives. It's just my guilty pleasure. Yes, it's your guilty pleasure. Oh, well, I'm good for you. But the truth is, if your guilty pleasure is stressing your financial condition, then you should look at that guilty pleasure. Else, you become a life wasted. Another way is you need to understand wisdom. You need to understand the times. You need to understand what you represent. And you need to read the room. A lot of people nowadays do not need to, they don't know how to read the room. They are oblivious of the happenings around them. They are oblivious of what is going on around. They keep saying, I don't care. I don't care. You don't care. But at some point, you need to care what's going on. Because you do not live in isolation. You live in an environment. You live in a society. And you must read the room. There are some things you shouldn't be doing at a time where there's massive poverty and inequality in the country. You should have the capacity enough you know, to be able to think dearly. I will not say more than this, but you know what, I, what I'm saying. You know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying. You are living in a rented apartment. You are buying a car worth 60 million naira. Are you smart? Don't buy a car worth 60 million naira if you are living in a rented apartment, if you don't have an apartment of your own. If you have apartments of your own that you two are renting out and you live in a rented apartment, it's all well and good. But don't buy excessive luxury when you have not put something down for the future. Thank you for watching that video. So, guys, before you leave, look at the top here. You will see where the road subscribe. Just subscribe to this great platform and also put on Sean Bear so that whenever we upload any video in this great platform you will be the first to see it and don't forget to share this video to all social media platforms on facebook whatsapp and instagram and also on youtube so that everyone out there will see this video so guys see you guys some other time